You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And this is episode 763. Hope that you are doing well. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate you, as always, spending a few minutes of your day with us. Do appreciate you spending your day with us. Thank you for the reviews. Actually, the number of reviews have gone up significantly on iTunes. So if you have taken the time to say thank you uh, for the information you've gotten on the show by writing us a review, well, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Also, a big special thank you to our friends at Go Professional Cases. Uh, you can still use discount code DRONEU15 to save a little bit off a GPC case. Um, that only works on their website, so you're gonna have to check out their website, goprofessionalcases.com. Um, but make sure to check them out. So yeah, I think Indeed. that'd be really cool. Good people. Totally good people, totally good people. Um, but uh, also a special thank you to our friends at the Drone U community. As of today, the new editing course is out and up for them to watch. So make sure if you're not a member, you become a member today because as a member, you get free access to all the new classes that we put out on top of the existing classes that we have now. So that's editing using what? Using Final Cut Pro, but it's actually a much more thorough, comprehensive course than what we had before. I mean, it really starts at what type of shooting settings you should have, um, what type of files you should be outputting, just to make your editing smoother, easier, faster. And you know, guys, if, if you're delegating out work for editing, you should really take this class because I think it's gonna make you sharper and probably more efficient when it comes to hiring delegators. Um, so I would really, really recommend checking that out. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and let's get to today's question, um, which is brought to you by our friends at the DroneU community. Just check it out, DroneU.education. Cool. So today we're actually, we, don't, we haven't done this in a while. Oh, I thought we had a question. We do, but we're reading the question today Oh. for this particular podcast. Can you do it in some cool voice or... What do you got for me today? Uh, boring voice. Uh, Monotone. That's Ferris Bueller style voice. <laughs> no, this, this gentleman did try and was just having troubles getting it over to us in audio form. So making an exception here. But basically, unless you want to read it with some special voice that you've got in the queue. Oh, I've got hundreds of special voices. <laughs> I'm going to spare you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give it over here, Rob. Bring it on over. <laughs> All right, no, well, no, see. don't you read it. Don't you read it. I'm easy. easy. All right. So, all right, go for it there, Mr. Voice. Awesome. Starting right there. This is from Houston. It's from Houston and Dallas. Oh, Houston and Dallas. <laughs> Houston <Hold> in <laughs> Dallas, not His Houston name, and Dallas. His name is Houston and he lives in Dallas, Texas. Dallas area, I Dallas. think. But anyways, yeah. I got to get my... I think I'm gonna have to turn on my George Bush here. <laughs> All right. Uh, wh what workflow? Start over. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's George Bush. <laughs> Redo. <laughs> Excuse me, God. Take another rip. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm back. <clears throat> um, what's your workflow uh, when you get a job and you need to check airspaces and notams, etc. Uh, whatever your workflow, I was just curious to know from the time you get to the job until you actually take off, what exactly are the websites or apps that you're using slash visiting? And what information are you checking on? <laughs> okay, very nice. Just one clarification, Mr. Bush, and that is it. And I think it's an important clarification, and that is... It's actually from the time you get the job, not get to the job. And I, re I bring that up because obviously as soon as you get the job, you might want to be checking airspace and not wait until you get to the job. And that is the way he asked the question. So there well, you go. Well, that's good because I'm going to do a little screen recording right here oh, of nice. uh, exactly what I do. So uh, good morning, Paul. That, that That's me, actually. Sorry. That, that, uh, that would be you. So the first thing that I do here, uh, son, is uh, I go to Skyward. 
Airmap.io. Um, I don't like to use air crap, I mean air map, uh, because <laughs> they're Ouch. they're spending a lot of money trying to hurt little drone pilots like myself. And, and I just don't like to support guys like that or other applications mm. that use air map as well. Things like Hover, things like Kitty Hawk. I just don't like things that support the bad people. I don't like the bad people, Rob. Yeah, I'm, nobody likes the bad people. All right, people. I'm going to sign in real, real quick right here. All right, cool. Skyward.io. Skyward.io is the first site that I go to. Why? Because it's the most comprehensive. Um, there are a couple of other solutions out there right now. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There are four. Four. Mm-hmm. Hold your britches, y'all, because there are four people to help you out. Air Map, Project Wing, Rockwell Collins, and a Skyward. I use Skyward just because I'm familiar with it. Anyway, all right, I got to drop the accent because I'm going to kill myself here soon. Um, uh, it's just so much work to actually like try to do that. So I go to Skyward.io. I'm in Skyward right now. I'm actually making a screen recording. So if you watch the show on YouTube... You'll be able to see this. Um, And it's actually, I think, one of the simplest maps ever. If I want to fly in a certain area, all I have to do is, like, click that area and then plan a flight, essentially. But what I like about it is that it shows me where I can fly and where I can't fly. And it shows me when I do want to fly in an area and it has a little box that tells me exactly what altitude I can fly up to. So I think that that's uh, really Hmm. useful. Um, and I think it's a lot simpler than AirMap. AirMap does have a lot of good information, but it's actually become overcomplicated. Um, another thing that I think is important to notice, too, is that if you'll notice on most UAS-FM maps, that's the UAS-FM, meaning facility maps, showing you where you can fly, um, oftentimes those maps actually go past controlled airspace. So you really need to be careful when you're looking at the UAS FM maps. Oftentimes they try to limit airspace where there is no controlled airspace. So you really have to know sectional maps. So the next thing that I do is I go over to skyvector.com. And this is actually this little secret that I just told you about UAS FM maps going further than actual airspace maps. Um, Actually, here's the example. Um, it's funny that it's pulled up right here. It's because I was looking at San Diego's airspace this last weekend. Mm. So see this right here, 100 to surface. So you cannot fly um, from the surface to 10,000 feet all right here. Mm -hmm. But come on, zoom in further. Zoom in further. Come on. Okay, won't let me zoom Computer's in. Computer's working further. hard right now. It is. Um, but do you see this little sliver of airspace right here? Yep. That's Mission Bay. And Mission Bay that is triangle. 1,800 feet to 10,000. Hmm. And that's one of the little secrets about finding out places to fly is you really have to know sectional maps, sectional charts. Um, so continuing on, like see down here, everyone says this island is a no-fly zone. But look, 10,000, 2,800 feet. That's weird. I can fly right there all day long. So anyway, next thing I go to is air nav. If I have a real hard, difficult question about airspace, but I know where I'm flying right now, I know where I'm good. So after that, I go to tfr.faa.gov. Boom. Just search for my state really quick. Go to New Mexico. Boom. Go. Nothing in New Mexico today. So we're good to go. So you were just on Sky Vector. How does that play into the Sky flow? Vector is actual sectional maps. So right. what Sky Vector teaches me versus uh, Skyword.io is what are the actual airspace restrictions in the area. So you obviously have to know how to use airspace map or how to read airspace sectionals. Which 107 pilots are theoretically to do. should know. And I will say when we filmed our part 107 class, I had Ted Wilson come in here who's a certified flight instructor and who did all the educational videos for United, which United doesn't really have a good reputation right now, but um, he is very good and really helps you understand airspace in the best terms possible. Mm -hmm. I think he's done a very good job at um, really helping people understand and digest airspace sectionals. So then, yeah, so if you don't know airspace really well, check out our class. We've got a great one on it. We actually have three. Um, But anyway, continuing on, I've checked my sky vector. I'm going to stop the screen recording now. I've checked the sky vector. 
I've checked um, skyword.io. If I need to file for a, for an instant authorization, I can actually do it right away in skyword.io after I've checked everything else. But the last thing to check is really the weather because you really need to know what the weather is going to be like. So I always use AccuWeather. Um, and I don't like AccuWeather's website, so I'll just simply type AccuWeather.com in the URL and then say where I am, Albuquerque, um, because AccuWeather has had a, an issue with getting you to the right page sometimes, and then see how hourly forecast comes up in the search. Just go to hourly, and hourly is going to tell me everything I need to know about this particular hour in time. What is the real feel? What is the windage in miles per hour? What is the precip? And what is visibility? So visibility is on here as well, which is good because if you're a 107 pilot, you're not supposed to be flying unless you have at least three miles of visibility. So it tells me visibility right here. It also tells me the humidity and the dew point. Why is the dew point important? Well, I've seen a lot of people crashing this winter because uh, they've been flying in fog. I've seen a lot of close calls. But you have to know what the dew point temperature spread is. If you're within five degrees, you should not be flying because you're going to have moisture build up on the props and you're going to lose your bird. So it also tells me uh, sunset and sunrise. The only thing it doesn't tell me is KP index for today. Now you can get all this information on Hover or Kitty Hawk. But again, I don't like using those because it uses air map. So KP index for today. Let's see. That's Boulder. We don't need Boulder in 2003. We need it for today. <laughs> so, um, KP index today is six. That's actually pretty high. So, let's go back. So, does that change something for you, knowing that it's that high? So now, I'm going to check on my phone just to see exactly where it is. I forget the name of the app. I've got a whole suite of UAS apps. Um... No, don't update the app. Mother effer. All right. See how that little sim symbol that was on mm. the bottom? It wants to update, and I really hate that new Apple feature. I'm hating a lot of new things about Apple, in all honesty. They're making things more difficult. KP index is two here, but I went to a site. So you can go to forecast.io and get that information as well. So real quick, because a lot of listeners are not very familiar with KP index, probably... Just a real quick synopsis. KP index is the measurement of magnetic interference caused either by the sun or by other forces. And if you have a solar storm or a high KP index, you can lose your GPS signal and you can have a flyaway. Never a good thing. Yeah, you don't want that. No. So have you heard of anybody and do you recommend, or is it overkill, to maybe take screenshots of everything that you've done here just to document that you've done your work to make sure you're safe to fly? Is that... Is that overkill, or what do you think about that? In all honesty, I do think it's overkill. I mean, in Part 107, they say that it's recommended that you um, take, uh, what is it called, logs and everything, mm -hmm. but it's not required. There's a difference between required and recommended. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say based off on the, the FAA's current ability to handle what's given to them, I would say it's really not that important. Yeah, you've been spending a lot of time that you just don't need to spend. Correct. Now, okay. a, good, a really solid good pilot would tell you to keep records and logs of everything sure. because if you ever have a maintenance issue, you can go back and kind of figure out maybe where it happened from. I, I think maintenance logs are a great thing, but these actual day-to-day -day logs, uh, in all honesty, probably not that necessary. Yeah, and I see those as two separate things. I mean, as far as this process and the workflow of figuring out airspace, that's a separate issue from maintenance, I think. True. So. Yeah. All true. right. Cool. True, true, true. So I will go ahead, if you listen to the show on iTunes, it'll be up in about three or four days' time on YouTube, and I will have a screen recording there, and you can watch exactly how I did it. So I think that ans that answers the question, pre-flight with drones. Um, and if anyone has any further questions, they should go to askdroneu.com and upload their question there, where we would be happy to answer it. If you can't wait a long time, there is good news. You can go to droneu.education.com, sign up to become a member and have instantaneous access. That's right. Instantaneous access to dun, 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 questions and the community. So mm -hmm. if you want your questions answered a lot faster, just go to droneu.education and you'll get access to the community where you can ask experienced pilots what they do. Absolutely. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.